morning. Today is Saturday, 20th of June. It's the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. O God, who prepared a fit dwelling place for the Holy Spirit in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, graciously grant that through her intercession we may be a worthy temple of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is carrying on the readings we've had from both Kings and Chronicles, and this is another king who's been uh, unfaithful and consorted with the local false gods and comes to a sticky end. The Gospel from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 to 51. Every year the parents of Jesus used to go up to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was twelve years old, they went up for the feast as usual. When they were on their way home after the feast, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem without his parents knowing it. They assumed he was with the caravan, and it was only after a day's journey that they went to look for him among their relations and acquaintances. When they failed to find him, they went back to Jerusalem, looking for him everywhere. Three days later, they found him in the temple, sitting among the doctors, listening to them and asking them questions. And all those who heard him were astounded at his intelligence and his replies. They were overcome when they saw him, and his mother said to him, My child, why have you done this to us? See how worried your father and I have been looking for you. Why were you looking for me? he replied. Did you not know I must be busy with my father's affairs? But they did not understand what he meant. He then went down with them and came to Nazareth and lived under their authority. His mother stored up all these things in her heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the longest day this year. From tomorrow onwards, the day starts to get shorter until we come to December the 22nd, the shortest day and the longest night. Though, intriguingly, it's also regarded by the meteorologists as the first day of summer. So there is a sense in which we look forward to perhaps for summer days, but certainly the last week has not been uh, summer. It's been uh, uh, wet and, and drizzly and, and coolish. This Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary follows, as of yesterday, the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, but it's got a different emphasis. The emphasis of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is the love of God for all humanity. This feast talks about Mary's heart, which is referred to twice in Scripture, both when the angel comes and announces that she's to be the mother of God, she stores this in her heart, and again here when Jesus says, Don't you know I must be about my father's business? And she stores this in her heart. It's not exactly clear precisely what is meant by storing in her heart, but we understand it to mean that she's pondering, she knows there's something special about her son, she doesn't know the details of what it all means, but that it's very deep to her. The emphasis here, I think, is her love for her son. And that is where we come in, because we regard Mary as the mother of the church. She is the first of the church. She was the first to be part of the body of Christ when she held Jesus in her very body. And through our baptism, we are part of the body of Christ. And so it's Mary's concern and love for her son, in which we're included, that she has her love and concern for us. And so she's certainly somebody we turn to for intercession, 
with through her to her son Jesus. And this, this feast we celebrate both the church, we're all together as children of God in the church. Mary is our mother, the mother of the church. And we also come with confidence knowing that we can turn to her for her intercession. I think we're also encouraged to ponder in the heart the words of scripture. It's a very real sense that the word of God which carries the body of Christ, which carries the body of his thinking and teaching, is something we should be committed to. We're doing it by listening to these very reflections on the gospel, on the scriptures, but also building in each day, reading some of the scriptures, pondering them, knowing that through the scriptures, God reveals to us the fullness of both his revelation, his love, and his salvation in the person of Christ. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response to the bidding prayers is, Lord, may your mother pray for us. Lord, may your mother pray for us. Let us proclaim the greatness of our Saviour, who chose to be born of the Virgin Mary. Confident that he will hear us, we ask, Lord, may your mother pray for us. Son of Justice, you showed your day was dawning in the Immaculate, immaculate Virgin Mary. Help us to walk in the daylight of your presence. Lord, may your mother pray for us. Eternal Word, in the living flesh of Mary, you found a dwelling place on earth. Remain with us forever in hearts free from sin. Lord, may your mother pray for us. Christ our Saviour, you will that your mother should be there when you died. Through her intercession, may we rejoice to share your suffering. Lord, may your mother pray for us. Loving Saviour, while hanging on the cross, you gave your mother Mary to be the mother of John. Let us be known as her children by our way of living. Lord, may your mother pray for us. And we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you created a worthy dwelling place for the Holy Spirit in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Grant that through her prayers we may become a temple fit for your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, with your Spirit. May Almighty, may Almighty God bless us and keep us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bye. Have a good day.